الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Welcome to a new episode of Jewels from the Sunnah which is our daily reminder and uh, I pray that uh, you are having a blessed Ramadan and that you are using it in, uh, in a way that uh, pleases Allah, bring, brings you closer to Him and increases your Iman. Uh, today we have a new section in the book of Riyad al-Salihin and we are still uh, reading in the book of Al-Adab, Kitab Al-Adab, which is the book of manners and etiquettes. قال الله تعالى وشاورهم في, oh, This new section is actually on باب uh, الاستخارة والمشاورة which is a section on uh, seeking Allah's counsel and seeking counsel and advice from people uh, who have knowledge or expertise. قال الله تعالى وشاورهم في الأمر Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet وسلم, and seek their counsel in the affairs. This is Surah Ali Imran. وقال تعالى وأمرهم شورى بينهم أي يتشاورون بينهم فيه uh, This is in Surah Ashura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the believers that their affair meaning their leadership their um, most important decisions that pertain to uh, to the whole body of of the believers Allah says that their aff their affair is a matter of consultation and uh, counsel advice meaning it's not one person that makes the decisions or two people or three it's actually it's a matter of seeking uh, counsel from those who uh, the experts people who have the knowledge عن جابر رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعلمنا الاستخارة في الأمور كلها كالسورة من القرآن يقول إذا هم أحدكم بالأمر فليركع ركعتين من غير الفريضة ثم ليقول اللهم Before we start the dua, let me translate the beginning of the hadith It is uh, collected from by Bukhari on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah رضي الله عنه He said Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, would teach us or he taught us al istikhara seeking Allah's counsel in all of our affairs just as he would teach us a surah from the Quran um, the Prophet ﷺ said إذا هم أحدكم بالأمر فليركع ركعتين من غير الفريضة if one of you is about to embark on something or wants to engage with something or they uh, think of um, doing something uh, let this person pray to Raka of Sunnah other than the five daily prayers. So any Sunnah, you could just pray to Sunnah for the sake of Istikhara or maybe you're praying for example Sunnah of Al-Fajr you can still do the Istikhara with Sunnah Al-Fajr or any other Sunnah. ثم ليقل اللهم إني أستخيرك بعلمك وأستقدرك بقدرتك وأسألك من فضلك العظيم فإنك تقدر ولا أقدر وتعلم ولا أعلم وأنت علام الغيوب اللهم إن كنت تعلم أن هذا الأمر خير لي في ديني ومعاشي وعاقبة أمري أو قال عاجل أمري وأجله فاقدره لي ويسره لي ثم بارك لي فيه وإن كنت تعلم أن هذا الأمر شر لي في ديني ومعاشي وعاقبة أمري أو قال عاجل أمري وآجله فاصرفه عني واصرفني عنه وقدر لي الخير حيث كان ثم أرضني به قال ويسمي حاجته So um, the Prophet ﷺ said if one of you engages with something or wants to embark on like a project or, a, or an action or something to do like a decision in their life let the person make two rak'ah other than the obligatory salah and then say uh, oh Allah, I seek your counsel due to your knowledge and I seek your help due to your might and I ask you from your uh, plentiful or uh, tremendous uh, bounty and blessings because you are able and I am not and you know and I don't and you are the one who knows everything including the unseen oh Allah if you know that this issue or this affair is good for me in my religion and my uh, livelihood my livelihood and the end or the how my affairs will turn out to be eventually or he said in 
uh, if you know that this thing is good for me uh, in the immediate situation and the long term uh, long term circumstances, then write this for me, uh, decree it for me, make it happen, and facilitate it, and bless it for me. Then bless it for me. And if you know that this affair or this thing is evil for me in my religion, my livelihood, and how my uh, affairs turn out to be eventually, or uh, in short term and long term, then turn it away from me and turn, it aw turn me away from it and uh, decree for me that which is good wherever it may be and make me pleased with it. And then the person basically names their affair or their decision or their issue so what is this etiquette about it's about again this is actually a very important etiquette and it has to do with how we run our affairs or how we make decisions in our lives uh, Allah describes the believers as people who have seek counsel I mean seeking counsel from Allah and also seeking advice and counsel from people who have appropriate knowledge uh, with regards to a situation uh, the hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhu that the Prophet used to teach the companions to make istikhara, pray the istikhara, just as he would teach them a surah of the Quran. It shows how important it is in the life of a Muslim. That is, uh, because we don't we don't always know what is good for us. We don't always. Uh, sometimes we get confused and uh, uh, we we have a few like options and we don't know which is best for us. So what we are supposed to do is actually seek as much as not as much knowledge as we can and information as much as we can in order to uh, act upon that and then uh, we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his counsel and the way we seek Allah's counsel is any kind of two sunnah two uh, sunnah prayer once we pray it then we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we make this dua so every muslim should actually memorize this dua and if you uh, don't know it in Arabic. I mean, you can do it first in English, but it's better that you, meanwhile, you seek to learn it in, in Arabic and then you use it. So, uh, what does the person say in this dua? They turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say, Oh Allah, I, I don't have the knowledge and I don't have the capacity. You have the knowledge and you have the strength and the ability. So, I seek your counsel and I seek your help. If you know that this thing is good for me, obviously now in, in matters of my deen, my heart, my relationship with Allah and my, my worldly affairs, if you know that this is good for me, then uh, decree it for me because things happen by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning, oh Allah, bring it into existence for me and make it happen, facilitate it and bless it for me. And if it turns out to be evil, oh Allah, uh, keep it away from me and turn me away from it and uh, give me what is best and make me pleased with it and bless it for me so uh, so this is a great etiquette that, and, and the hadith here jabir uh, uh, jabir radiallahu anhu he says the prophet used to teach us to make istikhara in all our affairs and that shows that this was a very common practice now what what is noticeable is that people do this uh, do istikhara these days only with extremely important matters but actually istikhara should be done um, as uh, every time like you need to make a decision and uh, it's it's a way of enlisting Allah's help and and support and uh, obviously what you know the etiquettes of the Prophet ﷺ as well is to seek counsel from people that have appropriate knowledge about the situation like the decision you're making if it's say financial decision you seek the counsel and the advice of people who have the knowledge and expertise. Uh, your, your, let's say it's a matter of uh, a family affair. Then you seek the knowledge of the people who have good knowledge. You don't go to seek advice or counsel from people who don't have appropriate knowledge and expertise. You need people who have some exposure, people who have uh, useful information. Sometimes we trust the wrong people. We, 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 we reach out to the wrong people to give us advice when they actually... Uh, they're not qualified and they might do that in good faith but again a Muslim should not speak without knowledge but the thing is many people don't know that they don't, don't have knowledge that, that's an issue some, some, most of us humans we are under the impression that we know when we actually don't so these are important things that we have to 
uh, be mindful of you seek counsel of the people who are truly qualified not because you know someone and you trust them they are a good person to uh, you know reach out to for counsel uh, and, and I find this very common among people who go to for example do go to their Imam or to a person who has Islamic knowledge to ask this person about um, let's say sometimes maybe uh, how to raise your children well the Imam yeah could have most likely an Imam has some knowledge but you also want to look at the Imam is the Imam running the affairs of their family well like not every practicing person seemingly practicing person uh, you know practices uh, the right things when it comes to their family so you want to look at how the kids of this person are behaving uh, how does this person really raise his own kids or she raises her, her own kids how do they treat their spouse you want to see if this person really has the knowledge and the expertise because sometimes maybe a person has knowledge of the Deen sometimes but practically speaking they're not they don't know exactly how to raise children practically in, in practical terms so again and I'm not saying don't seek the counsel of the Imam a lot of the Imams are actually very experienced and they are people who seek to improve themselves and improve their own uh, parenting style and they strive to be the best person that they can and these are the people that you should actually refer to but there are people who are seemingly practicing and they are not a good example so you want to be careful you just want to choose the right person regardless regardless of how they look like or um, their their status in the society or in the community or how much respect you have for them it doesn't necessarily guarantee that this person has the expertise and you can't go to an imam to ask them for financial advice unless this person knows enough about finances and you can't go for example to a psychologist and ask them about matters of Islam and matters of religion and ask them for fatwa not because they are good at psychology or counseling that they are good in religious affairs or medical affairs so you always have to seek the advice and the counsel of the right type of people and this is why as it's, it's important to actually do istikhara and seek the advice of uh, of the right people or the people of knowledge now people have a some sort of confusion as to how do i know you know what is what is you know what is the result of my istikhara how do i know well it could come in many shapes but it will only come to you if you are in a state of surrender if you are in a state of trust because many people do istikhara but they have a preference and their preference blinds them to what Allah what signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could send their way uh, so this is why it's important as you are seeking Allah's counsel that you stay open as much as possible now how could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what in what shape could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send you signs well it could be just you find after the istikhara and you could do the istikhara multiple times by the way uh, that uh, you could find a very strong like you find a, a a pulling power or force towards one thing as opposed to the other and this thing was is not the result of your own personal preference it's just something that seems to you seem to experience after your istikhara so this could be a clue it's not necessarily a, a, a definitive clue but it is it's possibly so uh, and it's all again it's, it's it's by the way it's it's all about a matter of inner experience how much you feel about it because there are many factors vying for your attention attention here and for your feelings so it could be your own inclination it could be your own desires it could be an influence of someone's opinion it could be um, just a passing thought and it could be something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it requires a lot of like uh, discerning uh, faculty to be able to understand what kind of clues Allah is sending you away and it could be merely just something is facilitated and the things just come together and it be, and, and it seems to be happening this could be the result of of the istikhara sometimes it could be with some people Allah might make them see a dream a true dream or a vision in their sleep it might be the case but it doesn't have to be the case with everyone and uh, in every situation um, so there are many ways how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates the most important thing is that you stay open and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide your way and and then the person obviously as we said seeks the counsel and the advice of people who know and uh, you can't seek istikhara 
to do something wrong, by the way. It has to be halal and it has to be something good. And you have to exert yourself in seeking knowledge and advice. And then uh, when you reach a point where you can't make a decision, then you make the istikhara and you stay open. But if you make a decision and you find that you have made a choice and this choice is the most informed one, you also make istikhara and you go ahead with the decision you made. And if it doesn't happen, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen something, something else for you. If it happens, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen it for you. So there are two cases here. When you have arrived at a very well-informed decision and you see this is the wise course of action, you go ahead, you make pray istikhara and you go ahead with this thing. So if it materializes, then Allah has facilitated that for you. If it doesn't materialize, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen something else for you. Uh, but if it's an affair that requires some persistence, it doesn't mean that the with the first obstacle you give up on it. Uh, it might be an affair or a matter that requires persistence and consistency. So you might want to push back. And again, it's all about how you feel in your heart if you are open. The second case is when you are unable to make a decision. You have two choices or three choices and you don't know, you can't make your mind up. And then here you, you, you try to stay as open as possible until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens one of the affairs for you. And it could be, as I said, Allah uh, puts uh, a desire in you towards one of them or a preference inside of you uh, towards one of those decisions or one of those decisions becomes facilitated and you find things coming together. So istikhara is a very delicate issue and people could easily get it wrong. But the most important thing is to stay as open as possible. This makes us move to a new section which is باب استحباب الذهاب إلى العيد وعيادة المريض والحج والغزو والجنازة ونحوها من طريق والرجوع من طريق آخر لتكثير مواضع العبادة So this is a new section on basically a recommendation, it's a preference that when you do something good, like you, you approach something that is good let's say for example uh, going to Salat al-Eid or uh, uh, visiting a, a sick person and checking on them or going to Hajj, or uh, going to the battlefield, or following a funeral, a janazah, or anything, is to go through one route and come back through another route. Why? To increase uh, the places in which that you perform acts of worship. Uh, so the Prophet sometimes with, with some of the uh, acts of worship like this that he used to do, that he would take one uh, path, on the way there and another path on the way on the on another way why because again general principle in islam when you are walking to do something good you are getting reward this is an act of, of worship the walking itself so uh, and any piece of land any uh, any any spot here in the on, on earth here that you perform an act of worship on top of it it will be a witness for you on the day of judgment so the Prophet ﷺ wanted to increase the spots that would witness, that would witness, bear witness for him on the day of judgment that he has performed a good deed on top of them. So as you are walking, for example, to do to follow a janazah, you go through one way because every step you take, every spot uh, of the land that you step on will witness for you that you have performed an act of worship on it, which is following a janazah. Or you are going to the masjid. And you're coming through another one, you get more spots. So it's just a matter of preference so the hadith here on Jabir رضي الله عنه قال كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا كان يوم عيد خالف الطريق رواه البخاري collected by Imam al-Bukhari and uh, from Jabir بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم on the day of Eid he would approach the musalla through one take one route and on the way back take another route وعن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يخرج من طريق الشجرة ويدخل من طريق المعرس وإذا دخل مكة دخل من الثنية العليا ويخرج من الثنية السفلى متفق عليه Okay, so this is basically عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه uh, talking about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, 
So this is uh, the Prophet, he's saying basically that the Prophet وسلم, when he would go to Mecca for example, he would take one route, and this is for Umrah and Hajj, he would take one route and he would come back from another route. At least when he gets close to Mecca, he would take one route and on, on the way uh, back from Mecca to Medina, he would take another route. This is how the Prophet ﷺ would perform Umrah and Hajj. Again, why we said to increase the spots or the pieces of land on which the person uh, makes performs acts of worship, so they witness. They they witness for you on the day of judgment. This is why some scholars say if you are praying, it's good. Like you're praying two for Sunnah, you pray two and two. Then it's good to change your spot. Uh, you pray on on one spot, the first two. The first two units and then the second two units on another spot. Why? Because you are increasing the pieces of land that would witness for you. It's based on the same principle. This takes us to a new section which is called Babu Stihbabi Taqdim al Yameen fi Kulli Ma Huwa Min Babi Takrim. And this is a section on, again, a recommendation, Mustahab, uh, to uh, start with the right. Either right hand side, either your right hand or your right foot, for example, if you're walking, with everything that is of a noble nature, anything that has, anything that is that is considered to be of high value. Uh, so, for example, you'd find the Prophet ﷺ would start his wudu with his right, with the right side. So he would wash his right hand before his left hand. His uh, right arm before his left arm, his right foot before his left foot. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he would put, these are examples given, given by Imam al-Nawawi. Uh, we'll, we'll see the examples that he gives, but generally speaking, for example, when the Prophet ﷺ would put on a, a garment or a thobe, he would uh, put his first hand through the sleeve first before the left hand. He would enter the masjid with his right foot, he would uh, start brushing his teeth with the siwak on the right side first. Uh, when every time he clipped his nails, he would start with the right hand. Every time he would trim his mustache, he would start with the right, uh, and so on and so forth. So, قال الله تعالى فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فيقولها أم قرأوا كتابية سورة الحق that Allah subhanahu wa taala says on the day of judgment those who would be given their book on their record and the results with the right hand those people would say here you go read my record read my book why because it's uh, it's a book of uh, of uh, of the good deeds and the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa taala so they would be received with the right hand. Whereas Allah SWT says قَالَ تَعَالَ فَأَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ This is Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Allah says the people of the right hand side, these are the people of Jannah. وَأَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ The people of the left hand side are the people of the hellfire. And we have the, 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 the bad things, the, I would say the things that are a, a direct engagement with something filthy, impure, then the person uses the left hand. For example, the Prophet وسلم, when he every time he spat, he would spit on the left hand side. And uh, the Prophet وسلم, would enter the uh, washroom with his left foot first. And when he would leave the masjid, he would leave the masjid with his left foot. And when he washed his own private parts, the Prophet وسلم, would use his left hand. So the hadith عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعجبه التيمن في شأنه كله في طهوره وترجله وتنعله متفق عليه. Collected by Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Aisha رضي الله عنها she said Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم used he liked to use his right uh, right hand side whether right hand or right left or right foot. Um, in all of his affairs, meaning all of his good, noble affairs, in his uh, purification, like wudu, ghusl, uh, even the way the Prophet ﷺ would uh, comb his hair, for example, and arrange his hair, or style his hair, uh, even wearing his shoes. 
وعنها قالت كانت يد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اليمنى لطهوره وطعامه وكانت اليسرى لخلائه وما كان من أذى حديث صحيح رواه أبو داود وغيره بإسناد صحيح collected by Abu Dawood and others with an authentic chain of narration from عائشة رضي الله عنها she said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's right hand he would use it for pure noble issues and for eating and his left hand he would use it for washing himself after using the washroom and to remove anything that is uh, uh, impure for example to, to engage with anything that he has to engage with which is impure وعن ام عطيه رضي الله عنها ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال قال لهن في غسل ابنته زينب رضي الله عنها بدانا بميامنها ومواضع الوضوء منها متفق عليه from um atiyah radiyallahu anha she said that the prophet sallallahu instructed them as they were washing the body of his daughter zainab when she passed away the prophet sallam instructed the, the ladies who were washing her body to start with the right hand side to start washing washing the right hand side of her body and start with the uh, organs of wudu that would be normally washed in wudu collected by al-Bukhari and Muslim وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا انتعل أحدكم فليبت فليبدأ باليمنى وإذا نزع فليبدأ بالشمال لتكن اليمنى أولهما تنعل وآخرهما تنزع متفق عليه collected by al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said if one of you puts on their shoes start with the right foot and when you take them off start with the left so let the right foot uh, be the first one uh, where you put on your shoes and the last one to take off your shoes وعن حفصة رضي الله عنها أن رسول الله صلى الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يجعل يمينه لطعامه وشرابه وثيابه ويجعل يساره يساره لما سوى ذلك رواه أبو داود والترمذي وغيره collected by Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and others on the authority of Hafsa radiyallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa used to, uh, he would use his right hand for his food, drink, and for putting on his clothes, and he would use his left hand for other than that. Meaning again, <coughs> what was mentioned previously, which is cleaning himself <coughs> after using the washroom. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا لبستم وإذا توضأتم فابدأوا بأيامنكم حديث صحيح رواه أبو داود والترمذي بإسناد صحيح collected by أبو داود and Tirmidhi with an authentic chain of narration on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said if you put on your clothes or you make wudu start with your right hand side وعن أنس رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أتى منا فأتى الجمرة فرماها ثم أتى منزله بمنا ونحر ثم قال الحلق خذ وأشار إلى جانبه الأيمن ثم الأيسر ثم جعل يعطيه الناس متفق عليه Collected by البخاري المسلم on the authority of Anas رضي الله عنه that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم in Hajj after Mina uh, after he threw the first جمرة uh, he came to his uh, camp in Mina and he slaughtered his hadi, his, uh, the sheep or the, uh, the ram. And then he said to the barber, he said, uh, shave, start shaving my head. And he pointed to, his to the right hand side of his head and then the left. And then uh, he, he started uh, or the barber started uh, shaving for others, other people. So this basically shows it's a great etiquette from the Prophet ﷺ that noble things, good things in your life, you engage with them using your right hand or your right foot or you start with the right hand side. But things that are filthy, impure, uh, that you actually engage with them in the left, with the left hand side. So this is honoring your right hand side. Because generally speaking in Islam, the right hand side is always like look uh, honored, dignified, and is used for good things and for pure things. Whereas the left-hand side is the is you use it for dealing with impurities that you have to engage with. So this is a good etiquette. You start wear, uh, putting on clothes or shoes with the right hand, uh, then the left. And when you take them off, you start with the left-hand side. And then you end up with the right-hand side. It's a recommendation. It's an etiquette. It's not an obligation. But when it comes to eating with your right-hand side, is actually an obligation. 
So with this, we come to the end of this session. Jazakum Allah khairan for joining us. And I, again, I pray you, uh, you are all uh, utilizing Ramadan and you're having a wonderful Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us immensely for the work we do. And may Allah help us do uh, more of the deeds that he is pleased with and accept them from us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.